Authenticity. It means being real. It means being your authentic self or to the degree that, that I'm aware of it. And it's interesting because when I was in graduate school and I was studying existential psychotherapy or existential uh, philosophy, I felt right at home. It, it described who I was. Like, you know, do you like being alone and, you know, you see things a certain way and I realized that I wasn't comfortable just being like everybody else. And, and so it described who I was and it gave me permission to be myself. Existential psychotherapy or existential ways about dealing with the concerns of, you know, the fear of death, freedom or being responsible, um, this idea of feeling alienated because we were born alone, we die alone, and this idea of is, there's, not a, there's not one meaning in the universe. So dealing with meaning or meaninglessness is really important. So, so being able to reflect at, on things, not just to say, well, what happened, what didn't happen, but what does it mean to me? You know, why am I here? Those kind of questions. How can I be myself? Those sorts of things. And so when you get like that, you start to get through the veil of one size fits all. When you go to school, we all we get taught the same thing. We all think that we got to learn linguistics or, or or logic, those two, math and English, instead of realizing there's multiple intelligences. Some of us have spatial intelligence, physical intelligence, existential intelligence, emotional intelligence, and that not honoring that or not realizing that some people are more visual than auditory or kinesthetic that we have to have a, a style or each person has to figure out how do I learn and then how do I take in information in a way where I can give it back in the modality that the person is asking. How does mindfulness help us to be more authentic? Because be still and know thyself or know what's going on. So that when we get in touch with how we're feeling and how we're seeing things, and how we're being, we start to understand that formula of our beliefs become our thoughts, our thoughts become our words, our words become our actions, our actions become our habits, our habits become our values, our values become our destiny. So once we understand that, the number one thing about being authentic is taking personal responsibility for one's life. I am the author of my life. So I get to choose what the next chapter is going to be, and how I write the previous chapter, but the ultimate thing is I get to choose who I am gonna be. So that's why I'm so fascinated with it, because that, that gave me carte blanche and it also realized why I, I didn't wanna be around some people sometimes, or that I didn't wanna be part of a crowd if they were going to dominate me or tell me how I needed to be. You know, somebody tried to tell me to do something, you got a tiger by the tail. Because I'm, I'm just, you know, no, you can't tell me. I mean, I was, in, it was interesting. I was on methadone, and I remember methadone is a very humbling experience because you go and pick up your methadone every day, and the people that give you the methadone treat you like crap. And I remember one time I'm in the line, and I said, you know, I don't like this. I'm not going to put up with this. And then the guy looked at me and said you ain't gonna do anything else, you know, you can't just leave. And I just said, watch me. I said, I got off methadone on the dare. Because he told me I couldn't. You know, I had a teacher in second grade told me I'd never go to college. Pissed me off to in the second grade. And I was his pet, I loved that teacher. And then when he said that, I just realized, screw you. And I, in his mind, he probably thought he was saving me some disappointment. Yes, but what happens is you develop, as they say in Landmark, you develop strong suits. So those things help me to get to where I am, but to get to the next level, I gotta let go of those and, and grow. Cause see, our survival skills get us to where we are and we have strong suits, things we do really well because it's a reaction to those things. And so mindfulness is a mirror. It just shows you what's there and if you're at the faith and you want to know the truth, then you can change, you can transform. But you have to accept 
you have to have awareness, acceptance, and then action, and then assessment. You know, did it work? And how, what else do you need to learn? And it's a, and it's a iterative process. It's not one and done. You're always so. There's it like the onion. So when that trauma, I've been traumatized. So when the trauma shows up, I can't tell it when to show up. But I can create space and say, "Oh, this is interesting." I don't even call it trauma. I just notice that, you know, this is, it's a, um, this unpleasantness and there's this negative self-talk. And I say, well, what do you know? I'm not listening to you. Get out of here. <laughs> I ain't listening to you. It's just like some dude comes in the door and he's negative. I said, man, I don't want you. You can't be here. Later. Just let it go. So the letting, I'd say letting go is the whole practice. Just letting go. Just letting it go.